We're talking the latest Detroit Lions news here, and we're talking about uh, Jake Bates. He spoke why he decided to come here. The Detroit Lions in the wide receiver position, they just want to develop these guys. We're going to talk about what they said. They don't want to bring anybody in right now. The Detroit Lions predicting their defensive strengths and weaknesses and who's going to have breakout games here. Let's get this thing started right now. Are you tired of listening to me on LNU? Well, I am. That is so good because we're going to be bringing a lot of content creators on here. We had the meeting last night. It's going to happen. We're formulating it. Hopefully, everything will be good to go before training camp starts. That's kind of what I'm hoping. So, subscribe to the channel. You can listen to Dose of Dion, Everything King, Kurt Steele, Anthony from Royal Lions UK, right? the Royal Lions UK guys, uh, Dan, everybody that's part of it. If you want to hear that soon, subscribe right now. It is happening. I promise, promise, promise. Because I would love to have other people on here and, and help out for sure. So it, it, is, it is happening. Let's get into the Lions news as we get here. So this is predicting the Lions uh, defensive breakout players. I have not even looked at the list, so we're going to look at it the exact same time and have fun with it right here. So they have Jack Campbell as a breakout player. And I, I concur. I think he did OTAs and minicamp did really well. All we heard is excelling. And he's actually battling out Derek Barnes for a starting linebacker. And Derek Barnes did really good last year. So look, with Jack Campbell, uh, this is his year two. And he's, he, generally speaking, what he did last year as a rookie is kind of the norm. What we what we had with the three other rookies last year was not the norm. Is epic. Uh, so he developing kind of normal here, and it, it is getting better. And I expect him to have a really, really good season. And when Alex Anzalone is no longer here, he'll be the mic for the long term for the Detroit Lions. And that's good news. Really good news. Um, next player that they got is Brian Branch. He already broke out last year, so I think he's just going to continue to be Brian Branch. I don't know if it's a breakout player because we all expected it. Uh, he did it last year, so it's not really breaking out, but adding to more his game, for sure. Um, Ali McNeil, 100% a breakout player here with DJ Reader next to him and more talent on this defensive line and him slimming down. He's going to have ample opportunities to get He had five sacks last year. He broke out last year, but now he's got talent around him. He's going to have more opportunity to hit that quarterback and, and do what he does. So I agree with this 110%. Amik Robertson. I would love to think Amik Robertson's going to break out. It's how, where is he going to play? Who's going to, you know, the nickel position. Um, if he does play a lot, I think he can. I, I really like him. And, and if you ask Raiders fans, he was an undervalued, underappreciated uh, player for this football team, and he, th they really liked him. So I'm super excited to have him for the Lions secondary. So that was it from there. So I got a question for you. Who is a breakout player for you, let me know in the comments below. It says Panay Sewell is the heartbeat of the team, and I don't even need to read the article, and I already agree with that right now. Okay, I already agree with that right now. If you, do, and I'm sure you have, if you're watching this, you're a Lions, you're a Lions fan through and through. You've watched probably every um, game. You know when they're speed when the players are, are going off in a game and you see Panay Sewell just going ape every single game. He is a leader of this football team. He's the heartbeat of this football team. He is a guy that is exceptional leader for the Lions, even though he's young. But he is he is so mean and ferocious. His rookie year, staring down staring down Aaron Donald, not afraid, staring down other players when he walks. This dude is a beast. He is a absolute beast. He, he never misses time. Man, the standard is built with Panay Sewell. You know, when they drafted Panay Sewell, Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes, I'm sure you've seen the video, telling them that he is going to be the foundational piece of this football team. Panay Sewell is that cornerstone piece for the Lions. And make no mistake about it, he absolutely is. He is one of the most vital players in this football team besides quarterback. 
you lose Panay Sewell, I don't know how good this offense is. I don't know. He's that good. He's he's such a dynamic offensive lineman and so powerful and strong at the age of 23. It's unbelievable. But no doubt about it, 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 Panay Sewell deserves all the love that should be coming his way. There's no doubt about it, and he absolutely is that. Jake Bates explains why he signed with the Detroit Lions, and he says, Detroit really felt like home, even outside all the attention. It felt good, Bates said, and there's no words to describe what feeling is. It's just a good feeling. The people that were awesome, obviously, you could tell yourself, listen to them much because you never know, but no, it was awesome. Yeah, look, Jake Bates was the outstanding Michigan Panthers player who was kicking big old field goals, 64-yard field goals and such at Ford Field. Lions signed him to compete against Michael Badgley. And we are we appreciate it, that he is here, but you know, look, he's got a 50-50% chance of making this team. It's not guaranteed because, look, he, as he, he was kicking some good field goals, but he also missed some. And Michael Badgley, he doesn't have the biggest leg in the world, but he's pretty consistent when you're talking like before 50, right? So he so you got Bates with the strong with the gigantic cannon of a leg and then you who can every once in a while do a ball that goes flying out of nowhere and they got Michael Badgley who doesn't have a cannon of a leg even though it's a little bit stronger this year. He's more consistent but he has issues beyond 50. So we'll see who's going to win that bad boy. Um, I think it's anyone's anyone's job as of still right now. Um, let's get into here. Now, this is an interesting article, and I completely disagree with this. So it says, analyst points out uh, the supposed big question mark for the Detroit Lions they don't have. Now, when you instantly think this, when you're, you're reading this article, as soon as I read it, I said, yep, this is going to be pass rusher, edge. Um, that's that's what we're going to go with. That's not what they go with. They actually go with one of the strengths of the team, and I was stunned. I don't know if they paid attention or or what, but... Um, here's what they think. Linebacker, they think is 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 the weakness of this team. Yeah, I disagree. I 100% disagree there. First off, Alex Anzalone, in my opinion, should be a pro bowler. He's really good linebacker. He played excellent last year. He's a, a, he's a really good linebacker. Derek Barnes played magnificent. Well, not magnificent, but he took a big step forward as a good starter last. Really good starter. And Jack Campbell's blowing up right now in camp. We only generally do two linebackers, so that's just, if you're talking about three, that's good right there. Malcolm Rodriguez, Jalen reeves Maiman, they're really good backup linebackers. I don't, I don't get it. I thought they would go edge here, so I completely disagree with this. Uh, disagree. I would just go with edge and pass rush. But look, everybody has has their own opinion uh, of you know what's potentially is the biggest weakness. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with with edge opposite of Aiden Hutchinson just because we haven't seen anything. Uh, linebacker is, pr- I th- you know, I, I thought it was pretty good. So uh, that's what I think. Let's go to the next article here. Detroit Lions not interested in signing whiteouts prior to training camp. And this is something that I've talked about on my channel. We talked about an LNU on huge on the radio when I do my radio segments every week. I We, we talked about this of them not signing whiteouts. And I'm going to explain to you what they are thinking. And they are correct 110%. This team was built on the draft and development. And when you lose free agents... The philosophy, the Brad Holmes philosophy is the guys whom you've drafted before, whom you've been developing, can step into that role, and that's how you keep a good young team. You're constantly drafting really good. They replace players who leave in free agency, keeping the cap down. Your team is younger, and that's what you, that's what the goal is in for the NFL. So when even though I love Josh Reynolds and I would like to him come back, he left. So, this is their philosophy. We have Darius Fountain, 6'2", 210 pounds, who did pretty good in OTAs and minicamp. We got Isaiah Williams, the undrafted rookie, who's just one of the best route runners uh, uh, that you can hear of, right? And then you got Antoine Green, who we drafted last year in the seventh round. If you look at the preseason, he's made some big plays. So, they got three players right there 
whom they would like to see develop. But the, the, why sign anybody when you got three players you want to see what they can do? All it does is if you bring a player in, it pushes one of these guys out, right? So they're going to have these, one of these guys is going to make the team. And if all of them don't, if none of these guys develop, and, and we're talking about we're like week three in training camp or, or a preseason two, when teams cut down to the 53-man roster, watch for Robert Woods of the Houston Texans to get released. And if he does, this could be a destination for him. Him and Jared Goff had a really good connection with the Rams, and guess what? It was the same type of situation with Josh Reynolds, and it worked out well. If that doesn't work out, they have the ability to find other talent. The Lions, I believe, are fine right now at the wide receiver position. It is not the biggest need. Let these guys fight it in camp and see who earns a roster spot. Just because you're not a big name doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be bad. Smart teams draft for the future. Smart teams develop, just like Derek Barnes. We didn't know what he, we thought maybe he'd make the roster before when we drafted Jack Campbell. And then he developed to a good linebacker. Afutu Melfon developed into a really good safety. This is the whole idea of Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. This is something we better get used to because in years past, it's not the case. You just free agent with your, with your pickups. And no, we draft, even if they're no names, we'll see. Green's got some, I, I see potential in all three of them players, and we just got to see who wins it and how well they do. That's it. That's it. I, I'm not worried about wide receiver at this point. The Lions will fix it if they need to. The Lions got a good offense anyway. So, look, if you like content creators and you're tired of my voice, subscribe to the channel. I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot more content creators on here. I'm just going to be one piece of the whole cog that's going to be taking place here. I'm just one guy. They're all equal, if not better. So get ready for that. If you want to hear their voices with that said, folks, audio.